Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, our program is called Public Relations for Small Businesses and is presented by Tammy from La, La Fuerza. Thank you for being here with us this evening, Tammy. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Tammy Severino. I am the Director of Development and Marketing, the consultant to La Fuerza CDC, which is a nonprofit serving both Nassau and Suffolk counties, um, working with small businesses, uh, primarily minority and women-owned businesses all throughout the region to help you with the tools that you need and the access to capital that you need it to ensure success for your business. And we are are conducting um, webinars throughout Long Island that are on topics to help you with the marketing and uh, awareness for your business so that you can remain competitive in the marketplace. And tonight's topic is public relations. I'm going to share my screen and we will pick it up from there. Uh, as they said before, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat. Um, at the end of the program, I always leave a bunch of time for questions. Um, you can either, like, like I said, put them in the chat or I'll, you can take yourself off mute. Um, I will also provide you with my contact information because I know some people prefer to uh, ask questions offline and I always invite those questions. I try to get back to people inside of one business day. So tonight we have public relations for your small business, a primer. For those who have ever sat in on my, um, my workshops, I usually start with a definition. So according to the Public Relations Society of America, public relations is defined as a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. Uh, PR is intentional. So it has activities that are very specific. You're choosing those activities to build and maintain a company's positive relation, uh, reputation amongst the public. Um, so this is all about communication and brand building and relationship building. So public relations will help your business build and maintain a positive public image within the public. Um, it's a form of communication that lies, um, it's a form of communication that lies fully rooted in effective dialogue. And a key goal is to ensure that you have exposure to audiences on topics of public interest and placement of news items that will not require direct payments like advertising. If you have an ad placement, that is something that you are given a price for X amount of size, for X amount of range, um, and for however long the window is that it's going to appear um, digitally or in print. Here you are not necessarily required to have that direct payment. Now if public relations is done well, it will help you achieve your marketing objectives that you have set for your business and typically at a fraction of the cost that paid advertising will run you. The key to the success is the creativity that you exercise in your messaging. So PR tasks should be newsworthy. They should communicate a specific desired marketing message that you are choosing to put in front of the community. So um, PR can be both paid or you can do it yourself. Now, large companies um, and even some small businesses that have the budget to do so and can invest into a PR firm to manage your PR strategy and then the, the, to execute the efforts and the campaigns. But if your budget is very small or doesn't exist at all, um, DIY is the way to go initially. You can always work your way toward paid as your business gets bigger and as your uh, PR efforts gain traction. Um, it will take an investment then of your time, if you're familiar with the term sweat equity, if you are not paying for it directly, you're going to pay for it in time. Um, you need to get to understand the different techniques that are involved um, and invest in that time, but it can be a very effective way for you to build and maintain a, the brand image for your business. So 
uh, with little and in some cases no investment, small businesses are conducting PR campaigns every single day. Um, when it comes to entrepreneurs and small businesses, PR is a very useful tool in getting recognition for your business to compete with your larger competition. Um, they clearly have a lot more dollars to throw around. So this is kind of the, um, the evening ground uh, where you can even the playing field, because if you get this kind of brand recognition for what you are doing, you can oftentimes get more bang for that type of placement or that type of coverage than they're going to get either in PR or in their advertising efforts. But to succeed, you're going to need some practical skills, some strategies uh, that are aimed at enhancing the reputation of your business. And that's gonna be part of what we talk about this evening. I know my cursor is fighting me, there we go. So first let's talk about the growth of media sources. So typically years ago, we thought about media sources as being radio, television, and newspapers. Um, that expanded and continues to expand and evolve every day. So you have those traditional news sources, which are print media, that includes both um, newspaper and magazines, as well as television and radio. Now, the traditional news outlets um, have ex are expanding, we're expanding beyond those traditional news outlets rather. We are now including bloggers, YouTubers, podcasters, online publications, and the list grows every day. That means that you have more opportunities for placements because there is the constant need for new content to be covered. Podcasters are always looking for new people to interview. Bloggers, if you're blogging twice a week or every week, you need things and people to cover. Um, so your business could get coverage if someone is covering a topic related to what your company does. So the growth of media sources is the growth of opportunity for you. So let's talk a little about PR versus marketing. So there are four key differences between public relations and marketing. First of all, let's talk about credibility. So you see an ad on TV, you see an ad in a newspaper or a magazine, you tend to be skeptical of the claims that are made in those ads. You know that people are paying for those ads, companies are paying for those ads, and they may or may not be as accurate as one might like them to be. So people do have a natural tendency to be skeptical of the claims that are made in those ads. Um, however, when you are dealing with a trusted news, news source like a newspaper or a television or a radio news broadcast, people tend to trust that a little bit more. So coverage in that vein is often um, absorbed and believed more readily than the advertising piece. So you need to keep in mind that publicity is promotion veiled as news uh, or a feature story or an editorial. The next difference is control. When you are advertising, you have almost total control of what is going to be said, um, what it's going to look like, when it's going to appear. So all aspects from content to size to format to timing is included. PR is the opposite of that. So you can write wonderful content. You can put out a press release and it's got fabulous content in it, but you don't have control about how it's printed, when it's printed, how it is used overall. The third difference between PR and marketing is appeal. PR efforts need an angle. So the messaging has to appeal to a particular intended audience, whether that's customers or the media itself. So it has to get picked up. Advertising targets only the sales prospects. It's not designed to reach a broader audience. So if you are uh, advertising a pharmaceutical product, it's designed for people who need that particular pharmaceutical product. You don't have that issue. You're not paying attention to the commercial. However, if it's a story related to um, different components about 
uh, an illness, then it may have a broader based appeal. So there's, there's a difference in terms of the way um, it's picked up and, um, and the way it will attract the audience that's going to pay attention to it. And then of course there's repetition. Advertising is repeatable. You can take an ad and you can run it and run it and run it again, as long as you have the budget to keep paying for additional placements. PR is not repeatable. So any given media source will cover the story and they will do it one time. So if you have a show that has covered you and you were on the Tuesday evening broadcast and on the weekend, and you will see this sometimes in cable TV, on the weekend, they may run a rebroadcast of everything that ran during that week from Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, and you get that second airing, that is a bonus because that rarely happens. So it's usually a one and move on to the next story. Next, let's talk a little bit about maintaining your reputation. PR, public relations is earned media. That means you have put something out and it has been received and embraced. So you don't pay for it, you are earning coverage through relationship building or that you are doing something that someone has embraced and found of interest um, to the news sources in the community. So whether it is print or radio or TV or digital, it is it has been picked up as something of interest to share. So because of this, PR is a very effective way to enhance and maintain your reputation um, as well as that of your business. It is ongoing though. Relationships are not one and done. Think of even a personal relationship. You don't say, well, I did something nice for my friend today. I'm covered for the decade. Nope, you gotta do something nice again the next time your friend is in need or just because you're being a good friend relationships work that way and reputation management works that way. So you must work at the reputation of your business or your personal brand if you are the business at all times. And it can take a long time to build the reputation that you are seeking, but it takes uh, the snap of a finger to lose that reputation if you do something foolish. So do not squander that reputation. It is something that you have to carry very close to the vest and make sure that you are tending to regularly. So like I said, this takes time. All of it takes time. Small businesses are the most impatient when it comes to results related to PR. So it is not a, pro, uh, a provide instant results type of scenario. So you wanna think of it as part of a long-term effort and it is typically part of your long-term marketing strategy. Um, as an important side note, creating your own credibility and the credibility for your business takes time. So remember that, and, and I, I realize I'm, I'm repeating that concept, but it is a critical one. It helps build your brand recognition and it creates trust with your prospective audience. Um, your reputation is something that helps to check off boxes of whether or not you are going to be chosen or your business is going to be chosen versus that of your competition. So tending to that on a regular basis is really, really critical. Um, and as far as goals, your PR efforts should seek to enhance your credibility and increase your sales over time. So if you are being covered as um, someone who is top notch in a particular area, the idea is that over time, as people have need of that product or service, they're gonna think, oh, I'm gonna call you because I have seen your name for time and time again. Um, and that window could be months, it could be years, but now it's time for me to tap into that service. You're who I want. And that's where you want to position yourself and your business. So now let's talk a little bit about um, some tips for starting a PR campaign. So the first tip, like I said earlier, is that public relations is all about relationships. Successful PR builds a trust between you and your business and your clients, customers, and prospective clients. So building positive relationships with media outlets um, is going to make sense for you 
for your business over time. Um, and it's critical that you develop trust with media outlets who are relevant to your business. If you're in the fashion space, then things in the pet industry don't make sense for you just for an additional placement. You want things where, you, you want those placements to be where your business has the potential of thriving by virtue of being in that space. So when we, we get to uh, talking about your cultivated media list, make sure that the ones that you are putting on that list make sense for you and your business. Um, another key piece in terms of that positive relationship with the media is that it is critical to respond to them in a timely fashion. If you have a reporter who is reaching out to you for a quote for a story, you want to be that trusted news source, that, that um, information source for them so that you're going to get that added by him because it's going to be that, you know, Bob Smith from ABC Company uh, reported that this is what he is seeing as a trend in the industry. Okay, that's great. Um, however, if it's not relevant to you, get back to the reporter and tell them that you cannot participate in this because blah, blah, blah. Maybe you're not relevant because you don't have those statistics. Maybe you don't track a certain something, but perhaps you can direct him to someone else. So now you've, you've helped to narrow down what he's going to do after the call with you. Um, or I'm out of town, I don't have those statistics in front of me, but I wanted to get back to you to let you know that I couldn't participate this time. Because if you don't, they will stop calling you, they'll move on to the next source that did respond to them. Next, it's more than reporters. That is a very important tip. So relationships go way beyond the reporters. Who does it go to? Think about who the influencers are around you and your business. So it might be local polit uh, politicians. It might be the local chamber of commerce. So the president of the chamber and whoever the board is or even particular committee chair people who are relevant to what you do. Uh, it could be local social media influencers. They have thousands upon thousands of followers and their followers Real, they, they're called followers for a reason. If they are opening up and, uh, a, a, a particular bag of kibble for their dog and they say, this is the best kibble you can buy for your dog, many of their followers are going to start purchasing that kind of kibble for their dog. So if you're in the pet space, that's an important influencer for you. And you can extrapolate that to whatever your product or services. And think of who else can benefit your business from uh, their word of mouth out there. So make sure that these are people who can rely on you so that you in turn can rely on them. Next, it is really important to be compelling. Just the fact that you're doing a something isn't necessarily newsworthy. You need to consider that PR is storytelling and storytelling is an art form. You need to practice your story. Practice in a mirror. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. Um, or use your phone or your tablet and record yourself. Put it on selfie mode and record yourself making a presentation, whether it's a short 30-second pitch, maybe it's your elevator speech, maybe it's the story you wish to convey. But it's important to see how you are getting across what you're saying because what you're saying is important and how you're saying it is equally as important. So work on that art form because it is absolutely essential to getting PR pickup. Um, so all of those things will help you in terms of reporters, influencers, bloggers, vloggers, all choosing to say, yes, I want to speak to you. I wanna interview you. I wanna cover what you're doing. Um, and focus your story on unique elements about your business or something that you've done or that you're planning to do. This is coming up, uh, we're in the middle of summer. This is something we're launching for the fall. If your business gives back, charity work is very important. It's an opportunity for you to highlight the best part of who you are and what your business is doing. And for those of you on Long Island, since we're here in Oceanside, it is critical because the charity space 
on Long Island is a very, very important one. People are really, really um, heavily invested in the nonprofits that are in the region. And that's a way for you to set yourself apart um, as someone who is involved in nonprofit work. And if you offer a unique experience, you should talk about that. Think of all the things that make you and your business unique, compelling, um, and, and meaningful for the viewer, for, for the receiver of that information. Be an expert. One of the most common techniques for getting into the press is self-promotion. So about your own expertise. You're not gonna send a press release that says, yeah, we do a pretty decent job at something. You're gonna talk about it and say, we offer the best programming there is on a certain something or we sell the best kibble, we sell the best plush toys, we provide the best hair, hair care. Whatever your business does, you want to talk about it as the expert because reporters and bloggers are always looking for experts in the community, in a particular industry, in a particular professional sector to be able to give a quote, to be able to provide background information and details. You should be that expert. If you are not, your competition will be. So I'm gonna give you an example. If you own a gift shop, why not create an article on the top 10 trends in holiday gift giving? Send that out. In addition to possibly printing that item, reporters are going to realize that you are someone to reach out to when they're doing stories related to what you do. Um, so be sure your article goes out to all of the relevant media and even post it onto your website, promote it on your social media. If you are doing content mailings uh, through email blasts, send it out to your whole list. Potential story ideas are valuable to the media, especially in the 24 hour news cycle that we live in right now. They are consistently looking for new ideas. Um, so position yourself as the expert in this realm and they will come to you for those quotes and for those background details for their stories. This is one of my favorites. It's called HERO. It stands for Help a Reporter Out. It is a service that is emailed uh, three times a day, once in the morning, once at noon, once at about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. You should hop onto HERO. It's haro.com, go to subscribe there and choose the areas relevant to what your business offers. They have lifestyle, they have business, they have general. Um, you will get those daily emails and it will itemize stories, whether it's for a book, whether it's for a blog or for a, new, for a news article. Um, and you have an opportunity to respond to reporters who are specifically seeking sources. And it will tell you exactly how to respond, but it's an opportunity for you to get into print as a cited source. Then you can promote that on your social media, on your website, as seen in CNN.com or CNET or whatever the outlet is, you will be able to share that and position yourself more and more as the expert. Be charitable. We just talked about that. Local charity events get press because feel-good stories are a necessity locally and nationally. So you get um, for both local and national uh, media, they need to cover those. It is an important component to their overall news cycle. Um, so if you sponsor an event or join a committee or volunteer at an event, that's going to position you as someone who is charitable in the community and you're gonna be counted as a person or a business who's one of the good guys. And that's exactly how you want yourself positioned. And that's how you want to make sure that that's a piece or, or a component of the coverage that you and your business are able to garner. Another important thing is Google Alerts. It's a great way to track media placements and see how some of your PR efforts are doing. So whenever your placements or your business, the phrase that you put in, your name, whatever it is, when it appears on the web, on the internet, Google is going to send you an email that's, that uh, has a link and covers that particular 
piece of news. So you can create an alert on Google for whatever it is that you're looking to track. You can track your business's name. You can track your industry. You can monitor both your business and your chief competitor. So there's lots of different ways to use that to see how you're doing, how they're doing, and how then you can analyze how you're doing compared to how they're doing. So this is how you would create an alert. Um, you go on to Google, you go to Google Alerts, you in the box at the top, you're going to enter the topic that you want to follow. You can adjust the settings to see how often you get your notifications. You might want them every time something posts. You might want it once a day. You might want it once a week. You can tell it if you want it in English, Spanish, French, and so on. Um, it'll You'll see the types of sites that you're going to see covered, um, the part of the world you want to hear from. If you're only interested in the United States, you can put that down. Perhaps you do business in the United States and the United Kingdom. So those are the two areas you want covered. How many results you want to see in a particular email and what accounts, meaning what email is going to get the alert. You're going to then click, click create alert. And now every time there is a match, according to your parameters, you will be notified. You also want to develop a media kit. It is a really important tool to have so that reporters have a good understanding of your business, its leadership, and the information related to your business. So what's in it, it, it first of all, it's an information packet all put together. Um, they used to be done in paper. Reporters will not accept them anymore, or if they accept them, they toss them after they get them. What they want, it, then for a while it was on a flash drive, a thumb drive, what they want is a spot on your website. That is the way you want to make it very easily, readily accessible to a reporter. So your media kit should include a one page fact sheet about your business. You might want to put in a little history about the business. You might want to have what products or services are offered. Um, if you have certain relevant uh, certifications, include that. Hours of operation, contact information. You want to have a bio for you as well as a bio for any other key person in the business and the matching headshot for each person. One for you, one for anyone else who has a bio. You want to have your business logo in a printable format. So you want to have it in whatever artwork you have for your business. You want to make sure the file is there. Any current news related to the business have a link to those stories. And whenever you pitch a story about you or the business, you're going to include a link to the media kit. Now, most people don't want to have, if you think of the tabs that are at the top or down the sidebar of your website, uh, you have about us, you have contact us, you have your products or your services, all those different tabs. Most folks don't have a public facing tab for their media kit. So you might give them something that's www or https slash ABC corporation slash media kit. And that exists, and if you went into the site map, you would see it, but it's not a public facing page. This way, a reporter is gonna type in that exact link or copy and paste it, and it will drive them right to your media kit, but it's designed to be there for the press so that the general public isn't tapping into that um, and, and reaching out to you about something that's not relevant to media issues. So those are all the things that are really important to get your, um, your PR out the door, to get it up and running and out the door. And if you have questions, I would be very happy to take them. And just so that you know where you can find me afterwards, again, I'm Tammy Severino, and I am Director of Development and Marketing, the consultant to La Fuerza CDC. Um, I'm reachable at Tammy at LaFuerzaCDC.org. My number is here as well. And I thank you. I'm going to come out of screen share, and then I am here to answer any questions that thank you Thank you, Tammy. Have. I'm just going to stop the recording, and then we'll do questions.